it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you are designing a large distributed application with 30 microservices. Each of your distributed microservices needs to connect to a database backend. You want to store the credentials securely. Where should you store the credentials? So we know that it's a distributed application, a lot of moving pieces, multiple microservices, and we want to ensure that the credentials for them to talk to each other are securely stored. So given that this is a large application with many microservices, we do know that there are multiple interconnected parts. And we have all these apps and VMs potentially talking to each other. So that's a lot of credentials to store and manage. And therefore, this is clearly a solution or a requirement that needs a solution that can scale very well and doesn't have any interlocking of parts. You also want to obviously store the credentials securely, right? Except for a few key people who generate and maintain the keys, nobody else should have access to the credentials. In anything related to credentials and IAM, of course, we also need to follow the principle of least privilege. Nobody should have any more access than required to get the job done. With that analysis done, let's move on to the options that we have. Option A suggests that we store the credentials in the source code. This breaks the principle of least privilege because source code is shared among many people. Your developers will have access to it, your build engineers will have access to it, your production people also could have access to it, and probably even some of your audit teams and testing teams will have access to it. So you should not be storing secret credentials in a place where people other than those who should have access to it will have um, access to the source code, right? which will mean that you're exposing or leaking the source code. This is a grave error and definitely we should not be storing any credentials in our source code. Moreover, if you have credentials in the source code, it means it becomes part of the build. So if, for example, you want to update your key, if you want to rotate your key, then you're going to have to go through the process of rebuilding and redeploying, which is a lot of additional overhead. In any case, your credentials should never be stored in source code and therefore option A won't work for us. Option B suggests that we store it in an environment way. Anybody who has access to the VM will get information about the credentials if you put it in the environment variable. So ideally, only the app and maybe some specific people should know about these credentials. But if you put in the environment variable, anybody who has access to a machine, say it could be an audit team, it could be the networking team, it could be, say, just your manager or tester who is going and uh, looking at, you know, how the machine is configured. Therefore, for those reasons, we should never have these credentials stored as a part of the environment variable. Right? This is similar to the case where we're storing it in the source code are not very different when we're storing it in the environment variable. Yeah. It breaks the principle of least privilege. So option B is also not viable for us. Option D suggests that in a config file that has restricted access through ACLs, we store these credentials. Okay. Now, this is workable. You could ensure that there is a file with all the credentials as a part of it, and only those people who should have access to the credentials should then have the permissions to view that file. So you could kind of make it work. However, there are just too many problems with it also. One, we're potentially going to have one file or multiple files, right? So we'll have to have somebody else now manage the IAM, the group, the access controls for that file for all the different people who would need to access it today and maybe that's going to change tomorrow. And this adds uh, overhead that we don't want to deal with. 
then if we have to rotate some of the keys, we will have to manage it in a shared file, right? So if there's a shared file and we're trying to update the keys, anybody who is trying to access that file should consider that these things might be changing, right? It's not a distributed uh, controlled access like you would have in a database, right? You don't get that features. Moreover, the microservices themselves would potentially have to consider that this is going to be in a shared or locked file and we'll have to have additional code to take care of those situations. So all in all, though this might be a possibility, it just increases the overhead for us quite a bit and therefore we will eliminate option D. Option C suggests that we store the credentials in a key management system. A key management system centrally manages the keys. Right. So now you could have all the microservices and maybe uh, you know any particular applications or VMs who needs access to that, just access a key management system as opposed to say a centrally locked file. So it starts off being similar, but then the advantages of the KMS are much more. It also scales automatically, right? There are multiple servers in this case, all distributed, and they can st still access one central point where all the keys are stored. These keys also could have multiple levels of encryption. Like for example, data, there is a data encryption key and that is wrapped in a key encryption key. So there's a lot of power that the key management system automatically provides for you. You can set the key rotations to be automatic. So instead of using the same key each time, in case one leaks, we don't want that to be, you know, forever compromised. So it's a good idea to be rotating your keys every once in a while. So that you move off the old ones and you have a new key that um, is the credential for accessing that application or the data. So key rotations are automatic within a KMS. Apart from all of this, we also want to ensure that only some services, right, or some people have access to these um, keys and these can be controlled again centrally using the IAM, right? the identity access management applies even to the key management system and that allows you to manage that specifically for certain service accounts which would be the primary use case when you're having multiple services talking to each other uh, or it could be that some of the control for that is done by a few specific people and not everybody. So given all of those, option C is the most suitable for this requirement, which is to use a key management system to store our credentials securely. If you're interested in picking up loads more learning on Google Cloud, go ahead and subscribe right away. Mm -hmm.